The Lakota are an indigenous population of North America. Termed as the Teton Sioux, this particular subculture is recognized as one of the three important subgroups within the Sioux community, alongside the Eastern Dakota Santee and Western Dakota nations. Their present territories are located in North and South Dakota. The language spoken by the native population is Lak Otiapi, which is classified as the westernmost among three closely related languages within the Shuan language family. The origins of Shuan language speakers may be traced back to the lower Mississippi River area from whence they subsequently moved to or originated in the Ohio Valley. According to historical records, they were engaged in agriculture and maybe belonged to the mound builder civilization around the 9th to 12th century CE. Lakota mythology and, and other historical accounts assert that the Dakota tribes inhabited the area around Lake Superior prior to European arrival in the 1600s. Within this woodland habitat, their livelihood revolved on predatory hunting, fishing, and the collection of wild rice. Additionally, they cultivated corn, but in a region that was situated in close proximity to the geographical boundaries of corn cultivation. During the late 16th and early 17th centuries, individuals who spoke the Dakota Lakota language resided in the upper Mississippi region, which is now delineated as the states of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and the Dakotas. The westward expansion of the Lakota people onto the Great Plains during the mid to late 17th century was a result of conflicts with the Anishinaabe and Cree tribal communities. The history of the early Lakota people is documented by their winter counts, Lakota, Wanyetu Wawapi, graphic calendars carved on hides and then reproduced on paper. The Batiste Good Winter Count documents the chronological account of Lakota history up to the year 900 CE, during when the white buffalo calf woman bestowed upon the Lakota people the white buffalo calf pipe. In about 1730, the Cheyenne people brought horses to the Lakota people, coining the term Ukawaka to refer to these powerful, mysterious, and wondrous creatures. Following the adoption of horse culture, Lakota civilization became primarily focused on the endeavor of hunting buffalo while mounted on horses. In 1660, French explorers estimated the whole population of the Sioux indigenous peoples, Lakota, Santee, Yankton, and Yanktonai, to be 28,000. The projected population of the Lakota people in 1805 was 8,500, and it had a consistent growth pattern, ultimately reaching 16,110 by 1881. During the 19th century, a period characterized by prevalent sickness and violence, this particular Native American tribe had a notable surge in population growth. By 2010, the population of the Lakota community had surpassed 170,000 individuals, with around 2,000 individuals remaining proficient in the Lakota language, Lakotiapi. Following 1720, the Lakota faction of the Seven Council Fires underwent a division into two prominent factions. The Sion, who relocated to the Lake Traverse region along the boundary between South Dakota, North of Dakota, and Minnesota, and the Oglala Sihau, who established their presence in the James River Valley. By around 1750, the Sion River had relocated to the eastern bank of the Missouri River, and subsequently, the Oglala and Brule Rivers followed suit approximately a decade later. Sihau. The Arikara, Mandan, and Hidatsa communities characterized by their significant size and influence, have historically impeded the Lakota people from across the Missouri River. Nevertheless, the significant smallpox pandemic that occurred between 1772 and 1780 resulted in the death of 75% of the whole population of these tribes. The Lakota migrated across the river to the arid, grassy plains of the High Plains Plateau. The aforementioned individuals were the Saon, characterized by their robust physique and growing self-assurance, and exhibited a rapid dispersion. In 1765, a Saon exploration and raiding group under the leadership of Chief Standing Bear uncovered the Black Hills, also known as the Pahasapa, which were previously in the control of the Cheyenne tribe. A decade later, the Oglala and Brule migrations also across the Missouri River. Under the influence exerted by the Lakota, the Cheyenne population migrated towards the Powder River region in the western direction. The Black Hills were the place of residence for the Lakota people. 
The Lewis and Clark expedition of 1804 to 1806 saw a first encounter between the United States and the Lakota people, characterized by a mutually hostile confrontation. The Lakota bands refused to let the explorers to go upstream, and the group made preparations for a potential conflict, which ultimately did not materialize. In the Arakara War of 1823, some groups of Lakota individuals emerged as the first indigenous contingent to provide assistance to the United States Army in an intertribal conflict situated west of the Missouri River. In 1843, the Southern Lakota engaged in an assault on the village of Pawnee Chief Bluecoat, located near the Lou in Nebraska, resulting in significant casualties in the destruction of around 50% of the Earth Lodges. The second instance in which the Lakota delivered a rather severe blow to the Pawnee was in 1873, namely during the Massacre Canyon conflict in close proximity to the Republican River. Approximately 50 years later, subsequent to the construction of Fort Laramie by the United States on Lakota territory without obtaining proper authorization, negotiations were conducted to establish the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851 with the aim of safeguarding European-American explorers on the Oregon Trail. The Cheyenne and Lakota tribes have engaged in armed conflicts with emigrant and factions due to a rivalry for resources, as well as the encroachment of some immigrants into their territories. The Fort Laramie Treaty recognized the authority of the Lakota people over the Great Plains in return for unrestricted permission for European Americans to travel on the Oregon Trail for as long as the river continues to flow and the eagle remains in flight. The United States government failed to effectively implement the treaty provision against illegal settlement, resulting in instances when Lakota and other indigenous groups engaged in acts of violence against settlers and even emigrant trains as a means of resisting this invasion. There was a growing public demand for the U.S. Army to pursue punitive measures against them. U.S. Brevet Major General William S. Harney, with a contingent of 700 troops, retaliated for the Grattan Massacre by launching an assault on a Lakota town in Nebraska on September 3, 1855. This raid resulted in the deaths of around 100 individuals, including men, women, and children. Subsequently, a sequence of brief conflicts ensued, and during the period of 1862 to 1864, Native American refugees from the Dakota War of 1862 in Minnesota sought sanctuary in Montana and Dakota Territory along the western frontier, seeking support from their friends. The escalation of unauthorized settlement by Caucasian settlers on the plains after to the American Civil War led to a resurgence of conflict with the Lakota people. The Black Hills had a sacred status among the Lakota people, leading to their opposition towards mining activities. During the period from 1860 to 1868, the United States Army engaged in military conflicts with the Lakota and their allies along the Bozeman Road mostly because to disputes over the construction of forts aimed at safeguarding miners using the road. In the Red Cloud's war, Chief Red Cloud of the Oglala tribe successfully guided his community to triumph. In 1868, the United States entered into the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868, which effectively granted permanent exemption to the Black Hills region from any kind of white colonization. However, after a span of four years, the presence of gold was confirmed in the region prompting prospectors to converge upon the area. The military response to the Lakota assaults on settlers and miners was the deployment of army officers, including Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. In an effort to dismantle the indigenous community's commissary, General Philip Sheridan urged his military forces to engage in hunting and killing of buffalo. The post-1860 period saw significant involvement of the partnered Lakota and Arapaho bands, as well as the United Northern Cheyenne in several military conflicts. During the Battle of the Rosebud, the opposing forces effectively executed a delaying maneuver against General George Crook's army, so impeding Crook's ability to locate and launch an assault on their camp. One week later, they emerged victorious against the U.S. 7th Cavalry in 1876 at the Battle of the Greasy Grass at the Crow Indian Reservation, which adhered to the limits established in 1868. Custer initiated an assault on a communal settlement of many tribes, a size that exceeded his first estimation. In the Battle of the Little Bighorn, the adversaries, under the leadership of Chief Crazy Horse, collectively eliminated 258 troops, resulting in the complete annihilation of the Custer Battalion and causing a casualty rate above 50% for the regiment. Although the Lakota decisively defeated Custer's army, 
The Lakota and their allies did not experience prolonged satisfaction from their triumph against the U.S. Army. United States Congress approved funding to augment the Army by an additional 2,500 personnel. In a sequence of military engagements, the bolstered United States Army emerged victorious over the Lakota bands, therefore concluding the Great Sioux War in 1877. The Lakota people were ultimately restricted to reservations, where they were prohibited from hunting buffalo outside of these designated areas and were compelled to accept food distribution policies imposed by the government. These populations were mostly dispersed over North and South Dakota, as well as many other regions inside the United States. The signing of a treaty in 1877, when several Lakota tribes relinquished control of the Black Hills to the United States, sparked much controversy around both the substance of the pact and its subsequent ratification. The extent of support for the pact among Lakota leaders is subject to significant debate. Intermittent low-intensity confrontations persisted in the Black Hills region. Fourteen years subsequent to the aforementioned event, Sitting Bull met his demise at the Standing Rock Reservation on December 15, 1890. On December 29, 1890, the United States Army launched an assault on the Minicuju Band of Lakota, led by Spotted Elk, also known as Bigfoot, near Pine Ridge. This conflict resulted in the loss of 153 Lakota lives, with indigenous estimates suggesting a greater number of casualties. Notably, the Wounded Knee Massacre claimed the lives of countless women and children. The federally recognized Lakota tribes, who are legally and treaty designated as a domestic dependent nation inside the United States, are afforded representation at the local level via elected leaders serving on councils for the several reservations and settlements located in the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Nebraska. These indigenous tribes maintain intergovernmental agreements with the federal government of the United States, mostly facilitated via the Bureau of Indian Affairs under the Department of Interior. In their capacity as semi-autonomous political bodies, tribal governments possess some rights that are independent from state legislation. One example of this is the potential implementation of Indian casino activities inside their reservation in accordance with the Indian Casino Regulatory Act of 1988. They function in collaboration with the federal government. These relationships are subject to negotiation and contestation. A significant proportion of Lakota tribe people possess dual citizenship in the United States. Voting rights extend to municipal, state provincial and federal elections. At both the state and national levels, individuals are represented by elected politicians who are chosen from the political districts of their respective states and congressional districts. Indigenous individuals residing inside and beyond the designated reservations has the right to participate in regular electoral processes for their respective tribes. In addition to its own constitution, bylaws, and elections, each tribe has its own set of prerequisites for citizenship, as well as its own articles of incorporation. The majority adhere to a multi-member tribal council framework whereby a chairman or president is chosen by the electorate via a direct ballot process. Manitoba and Southern Saskatchewan are home to nine bands of Dakota and Lakota people, together comprising a recognized membership of 6,000 indigenous individuals. Although they are acknowledged as First Nations, they are not classified as treaty Indians. Indigenous individuals, as First Nations members, are granted rights and entitlements by the Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs Canada Department. However, due to their lack of recognition as Treaty Indians, they were excluded from the process of land settlement and the generation of natural resource earnings. In 2008, the Dakota people rejected a land rights settlement package amounting to $60 million. The Lakota tribe is among the tribal groups that have engaged in various activities, occupations, and independence movements, notably in response to the increasing activity seen throughout the mid to late 20th century. In the 19th century, individuals initiated legal proceedings against the federal government, asserting their property rights based on their perception of the unlawful appropriation of the Black Hills region. In 1980, the Supreme Court rendered a verdict in their favor and resolved the case of United States versus Sioux Nation of Indians, finding that eight bands of Sioux Indians were entitled to receive a sum of $122 million as reparation for their claims on territory in the Black Hills region. The Sioux have rejected the monetary offer due to the inherent legal implications of accepting the deal, 
which would effectively cease their ongoing requests for the restitution of the Black Hills. The funds are now held in an account maintained by the Bureau of Indian Affairs, accumulating compound interest. By 2011, the account had accumulated a value over $1 billion. The Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which was adopted by the United Nations in September 2007, is a non-binding instrument. The countries of Canada, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand declined to affix their signatures. On December 20, 2007, a nominal assembly of individuals, spearheaded by Russell Means, an activist affiliated with the American Indian Movement, and operating under the Appalachian Lakota Freedom Delegation, embarked on a journey to Washington, D.C. with the purpose of declaring the Lakota Sioux's disengagement from all treaties established with the United States government. These activists lack legitimacy within the framework of any democratically elected tribal administration. The official leaders of the Lakota tribe have publicly expressed their disapproval of the actions undertaken by Means and his crew, stating that, as stated by Rodney Bordeaux, the chairman of the Rosebud Lakota tribe, they lack backing from any currently known tribal administration. They do not represent our interests. Means proclaimed the establishment of the Republic of Lakota, delineating it as an autonomous state with exclusive ownership rights across vast territories, including South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Wyoming, and Montana. The organization explicitly declared that they do not advocate for or serve as representatives of the tribal governments established by the BIA or those Lakota individuals who support the BIA system of governance. The composition of the Lakota Freedom Delegation did not include any elected representatives from the various tribes. According to historical records, Means had previously pursued the presidency of the Oglala Sioux tribe and had two defeats. Following the Independence Declaration, a number of tribal administrations, which were chosen by tribal people, released official declarations expressing their disassociation from the proclamation. It was said that some individuals were actively monitoring the independence movement. The proclamation did not get endorsement from any elected native governments. The Lakota people gained significant attention on a national scale after the broadcast of NPR's investigative piece titled Lost Children, Shattered Families which delved into the pressing concerns surrounding foster care for Native American children. The aforementioned incident brought to light the alleged act of kidnapping of Lakota children from their homes by the Department of Social Services, DSS, of the state of South Dakota, as seen by several critics.